This is Ole Miss wide receiver Jonathan Mingo. And I'm going to try my best to refrain from making the obvious comparison here. Uh, but that's what the, the fun part of Mingo is, is he's a, such a huge player, has elite yep. athleticism, obviously stylistically looks like A.J. Brown, Debo Samuel, but the production profile has never equated to that. So we're going to try not to get too optimistic here, but some of these highlights are special, special stuff. Well, he's about to be your fan base's favorite player. Let's put it that way, because he has some ludicrous highlight real grabs and highlight real plays. But to go through what you just said, six foot two, 220 pounds. Very few of those in this draft class. 44640 again at 225 pounds at a 152 10 yard split. Outstanding jumps, average agilities with massive, massive hands. But let's dive into why someone at that size with that athletic ability isn't mocked in the first round mm -hmm. or projected as a first round pick in this class. I think it just goes to his production profile, right, Hayden? Yeah, he's not an early declarer. He's going to be 22 years old. And usually, if you are an SEC superstar, you're going to be declaring early. That's just the natural progression. What happened as a junior, though, did definitely catch my eye. He ended up breaking his foot, and that derailed his junior season. But the two games before he broke his foot in practice, he had 116 yards and two touchdowns, and then 136 yards and a touchdown. So there's a chance that we missed this massive breakout season where he would have declared last year. And then this last year, you'll see some of these highlights. The quarterback just quite frankly missed a lot of throws. Uh, is he the most perfect player? I don't think so. Is he going to be a natural X receiver? Maybe not. He might have to be more of a power slot. But like you said, I think partially because of that injury and partially because other things about his actual traits, he didn't kind of live up to the potential that his athletic profile suggests he has. To your point, a question I asked myself is, have we seen the best version of Jonathan Mingo yet? And I actually want to spin that in a positive way, because right. if we've already seen a lot of really good from Jonathan Mingo when healthy on the field, I still think that there is a gap for him to reach his full potential, his power level of 3000, you yep. know, and just the traits like really spoke to me. The stats, though, as you said, are kind of hilarious in that he finally played 13 games in 2022 that equaled 51 catches for 861 yards and five touchdowns. But 40 percent of those yards from this season were only against Vanderbilt and Central Arkansas. Power had like 103 <laughs> yards and like 218 yards right. in two of those games of those 861 yards, 416, according to PFF, qualified as screens. And I don't think of him as just a screen catcher and run after the catch. And I actually think because of his athleticism, his feel for the ball, his size and speed, he's really good after the catch. But then they also charred him with just eight force missed tackles. And he also saw just 91 snaps versus press coverage. And that's like mm -hmm. a ton of numbers. Right. But again, it makes it, I would say, one of the more fascinating profiles for a player who, I'll say it, might have the biggest ceiling of any wide receiver in this class. Yeah, the ceiling is there. I I put uh, in my notes hidden upside. That's something I kept coming back to because of what you're talking about, where it just nothing's making sense about what the, the upside. We haven't seen it yet, but it's clearly there. Uh, my model had him with 18th percentile production. That's adjusting for his age and how good of a team Old Miss is. His PPR points per game were only in the 38th percentile here. These type of players just do not get drafted into the third round. But I think Mingo will because of some of the tape. Now, one of the interesting parts about his profile is there were a lot of screens. And he's very good at it because he's so hard to bring down. I was actually pretty surprised that his missed tackles were, were that low, like you said. I, I wonder if he's going to be like a little bit like kind of how LaVisca Chenault is in the NFL. I'm hoping that he's See, more than that because I think he's got more, I've burst, seen, more burst. I've seen that. I've seen that comparison thrown around and I just disagree with it okay. because I felt like LaVisca coming out of school was almost a short to intermediate pass catcher who then won with power after the catch. Correct. I already see Jonathan Mingo and you see it in these highlights create separation early at the line of scrimmage. Yeah. Let's just go through this one. Okay. You see this hesitation step right at the line of scrimmage, right? To force the corner to the outside. And then as soon as he escapes that initial jam, his shoulders in front, right? And then since he's 6'2", 220, once he is beyond you, yeah, that width that he has is so difficult to get back on top of. So he stacks you and then he plays big. He yep. tracks his ball and then lays out for it. Yep. I already see some, I'm not gonna call it nuanced route running, 
but some traditional, true wide receiver right. stuff and skills out of him that I have never seen from someone like Visca. I, I completely agree. I think that he has more long speed than uh, Visca did. And Visca going back at Colorado, never got passes down the field. Mingo, like you said, he will get some of those as well. I do think that he's going to be more of a power slot. I think that's maybe kind of where he can win, but there's a chance that like on that play right there on the line of scrimmage against press man covered, you can go win downfield. So his he's so boom bust. You know, I, I I'm want to be pretty optimistic. I gave him an early round three grade, but if you wanted to, if he kind of slid into the second round and stuff, I think you can get really, really uh, bullish on kind of what you can get from Jonathan Mingo. Um, surprises people after the catch, and that's where I think the AJ Brown Debo Samuel comparisons comes down to. He can block really well. In fact, when they got down to the goal line, they wouldn't play him at wide receiver. They would just say, "Go get your ass to tight end," and he would be powering through some guys as well. So you're getting a, a very unique type of profile here. But like you said, he never even led his own team in receiving yards throughout his four years in college. He only averaged 3.9 receptions per game last year. He pretty tight in his lateral movements, uh, but he's so fast, so strong, and there is a chance that we haven't seen the best of them yet. It was fun going back and watching his games with Elijah Moore too, because they're so different. And then obviously we got Matt Corral in 2021. Mm -hmm. I thought they were a bit more vertical at that time. I've loved Ben Fennell's comparison of Quincy and Nunwa. Yes. Who really developed in the league and was going to have, I think, a great career until injuries kind of derailed it. And this is a weird comparison because you know me and size and weight, and I typically try to stay in those boundaries. Brandon Ayuk is like an inch shorter and about 15 pounds lighter. Yeah. But Brandon Ayuk coming out of Arizona State had a lot of yards after catch capabilities, you know, refined his route running. And I would say right now he's one of the more underrated route runners in the league. I wouldn't be shocked if someone like Kyle Shanahan really loves Jonathan Mingo as a player with traits who has flashed that footwork and working within himself and Again, the the small details of route running create separation and sustain it while also having this big, massive body. 6'2", 220. Yeah. We don't see that in this class. No. And as a movement guy, as like your Z that you can work around and mm -hmm. sometimes put in the slot and sometimes work outside, I bet some really well-liked offensive coordinators across the league are getting really antsy and might try to jump the rest in an imperfect wide receiver class. Yes. He's certainly imperfect. The top case the peak case of jonathan mingo i don't think you can replicate with anyone else in this class i'm not sure if you know that jimmy butler meme where they hand him a sheet of paper he immediately crumb crumbles it up and throws it out that's what i'm tempted to do with my spreadsheets here because like he's not popping in the model it's like only like 35th percentile or something yeah 35th percentile but i'm with you i see more when i watch this guy and his like even like cedric tillman who we just made a video about he's 6'3 213. jonathan mingo is like a different like size component yes. like he's waste Stronger. This is like kind of a throwback type of profile. The guys that we really were excited about a long time ago. So, and then a class that I don't think is very good. I wouldn't be surprised if this was like the sleeper that kind of came out of nowhere. It gets way more draft capital than, than Dynasty Twitter thinks about. And then obviously, maybe it takes a year for him to kind of develop, or maybe it was just like, hey, he's healthier now, and he goes to an offense where the quarterback isn't missing throws, and all of a sudden, some of that yards after the catch ability, some of those screens gets him on the field early, and all of a sudden, we're cooking with something. And I know we had to wrap this up, but. I mean, I, I just keep writing down notes in my head because if you do write down where he already succeeds, right? Let's say on slants. Okay, once he gets those big ass shoulders beyond you, you can't work back over top. Mm -hmm. Like he has created the leverage advantage and he's won there. We've already talked about how successful he is on screens in this game. And then we've also seen vertical shots that work too. Yeah, That's all three levels. Yeah. That's all three levels. Yeah. And there are some grown ass man grabs that he put out there last year. There's like that one hander against Central Arkansas. He had another contested sideline catch against Georgia Tech. I mean, there's stuff against Alabama when they were down big, a corner was in his hip pocket. He like plucks the air, splits left, and all this stuff. Like almost each game, despite the production, again, just 40% of it in two contests, I can point to like, wow mm -hmm. like wow moments from that and i didn't get a lot of wow moments from wide receivers this year so why isn't he like a top 40 pick um because he what never surpassed I know, but why but why didn't he why didn't he surpass 900 eight. yards I know. I, i'm totally with you i think part of it is also playing with someone like elijah moore and ole miss right. and again only playing eight or six games in those and then there were times and I'm not an expert in Ole Miss's offense, but they would run like verticals on one side and he would be like the stationary player on the backside who would just kind of like catch it and then 
run after the catch there. All I can tell you is I'm certain he's going to be a fan favorite in training camp and preseason because he's a dog. Yeah. Like he is a dog. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if he was good on special teams. I wouldn't be surprised if he mixes in on the screen game to get him some touches on the field before he kind of develops. So we're, we're hoping for top 70 draft capital. And it, I think we might be trending in that direction just because like if you sort it by guys that are that big, there's just not many in this class. So we'll see. Quincy Nunwa, bigger Brandon Ayuk. And if he develops bigger like... Bigger Brandon Ayuk is so crazy to me. <laughs> no, but if he develops uh, like Brandon Ayuk... No, like, I get it. I get it. Yeah, that is something because I, I do want to I do want to bring up what Brandon Ayuk's size was because he, he he's so long. seems massive because yeah. 33 and a half inch arms. Right. When you look at it, he's just six foot, 205 pounds. Right. Right. right? And we're getting six to yeah. 220 here. Yeah. But I guess my point is the trajectory of their career. Yeah. The bull case. Yeah. I think that's the outcome. And Ayuk wasn't did. early declare either. I think he was a four year player, uh, same age. So was. Mm. was well, don't don't quote me on that. Uh, I'll, quote me <laughs> on this. He was a first round pick, and Mingo will not be a first round pick. Correct. I and this is not saying a whole lot. I think the floor is what Lavisca Chenault brings, but I think the the seal the path to a ceiling is a little bit easier with him, just like you said, because Lavisca showed nothing downfield. At least I can watch a highlight tape of Mingo where he can do that. Interesting. Looking at Brandon Ayuk right now. It says just 2018 and 2019, but those were his junior and senior years. It must he, have been. He's like a, a community college guy. Yep. Must have been a Juco run in there. So quote uh, me on and that. And he also had, you know, 1,200 yards and eight touchdowns, which is way more than our guy Pretty has good. here. Pretty good. <laughs> all right. If you want to go draft Jonathan Mingo and all these other rookie wide receivers, you can do so on Underdog Fantasy. Play best ball once. I guarantee you'll love it. You want to draft five more times. All you do is draft, and we take care of your lineup from there. And if you want to check out the other wide receiver prospects or running backs or let's say like tight ends and quarterbacks, hit subscribe and the notification bell on the channel because we got you covered. We'll talk to you next time.